yo youtube i am back with another video and look y'all in today's video i'll be talking about the top fives don't after my one year of having my clothing brand so y'all do not make the same mistakes that i did and y'all can reach success way faster man now look youtube man i want to just say i appreciate y'all for nineteen thousand six hundred and 73 subscribers as y'all can see right there man the 20k ball is finna get hit 20,000 subscribers coming soon and i want to thank every single person that has liked subscribed comment share with a friend etc but we finna get straight into this video we ain't gonna do too much talking i just got the top five dudes out the way if y'all haven't tapped in with that video make sure you do so it is the last video that i dropped before this one now we're going to get into the don't and the, the first don't that I can definitely say after my first year of having my clothing brand is do not rush drops. Do not rush drops. I cannot stress this enough, man. The last video I was cooling because it was the top five dudes, all right? The top five dudes, but I feel like the don'ts are way more, I wouldn't say important, but they hold a little bit more weight, if that makes sense, right? So, like I said, man, do not rush drops make sure time is on your side and what i mean by this is for example like i explained in the last video i had a halloween drop coming out for y'all a halloween drop that i started planning out september 14th then we rolled around we hit october and me and my graphic designer we were still working on everything and stuff like that only that we lost track of time and by october 13th i believe it was i was like bro like we're gonna have to scratch this we're gonna have to scratch this because number one, and this is how I think naturally. Like I always been thinking like this since I was younger. Okay, so boom, right? It was October 6th. Let's say I didn't, you know, I didn't hit up my manufacturer to tell, I mean, I didn't hit my graphic designer to tell them we ain't gonna do it no more. Let's say for example, we still rolled out with the plan and everything, right? October 6th. So it takes about a week for a manufacturer to finish everything, probably a whole nother week for it to get shipped out. That's already 14 days within itself. Then I have to mark it for about three to five days. So that's five, 14, that is 19 days. 19 plus October 6th, that's about October 25th. So boom, October 25th, I think Halloween is on 31st, obviously. But yeah, that's what, one, two, three, four, five, six. So six days until um, Halloween at that point. Yeah, October 25th. Then after that, I gotta still, you know, get into the whole process of shipping everything out. That's gonna take another four days. So people wouldn't got their, people wouldn't have got their product until probably like November 3rd, November 4th. And at that point, they're not wearing it for Halloween no more. So it's like, I, you know, I was like, you know what, bro, we're gonna scratch this. We're gonna push it back to next year because we don't have enough time. And like I said, for the second part, make sure time is on your side. Because let's say, for example, right, September 14th that I said that we started all of this. And let's say by September 30th, if we finished everything and I already have the pieces, I already have the samples. Now we're going to get into marketing. So let's say instead of having, you know, three to five days to market, now I have two weeks to market. Now I can ship everything out. That would have been October 11th that I finished all the marketing. October 13th is the start of the drop. And then we get to October 16th. And then from October 16th, um, they get their product until October 20th. At that point, it's like after I drop that, now I have until October 31st for people to look, keep looking at the brand and stuff like that. They're going to be like, dang, they had the Halloween drop and stuff like that. And they know they're late to the party, so they can't even get mad at me. But since I have all this, you know, content, all this, you know, products going out, I'm going to be posting my shipping labels. I'm going to be posting the orders that I got. Now people are going to be like, dang, I want that. Then at that point, if I have so much demand coming in, I can set up another drop. And then after that, another drop happened, then I can make way more money for something that I was promoting last month. Because I have time on my side now. I'm not rushing things. You know what I'm saying? So that's number one. Do not rush drops. Make sure that, you know, time is on your side. Always make sure that you plan out your drops at least a month ahead of time just so you can roll everything out. Because, you know, sometimes manufacturers do take a long time and then it's coming in overseas. So with that being said, you don't want it to be a delay and then people getting their order list, you know, their orders late. And number two is do not take an order without getting something up front. All right. Something up front. Too many failed payments. So with that, usually when you get an order on your website, and stuff like that people pay first and then they get their product afterwards but if you sell in person 
what I used to do is people will tell me what they want. I will go buy the product and then after I finish everything, then we will make this change and stuff like that. <sighs> Y'all, I kid you not, I have over $400 worth of clothes in my game room of people that I finished the product for and everything, they just haven't paid the money. They're bullshitting, wasting time, not responding back. So at this point, it's like, you always wanna make sure that you have some type of money up front because now they're attached to the money that you already have. So let's say for example, one order, right? The girl owed me $200 for the order. So instead of me asking for the $200 up front, what I could have done was, hey, I need some type of money up front. So when I start on this, I won't be losing out on money, time, patience, and etc. Bro, it's so much more to it that people don't understand. I could have asked for a hundred dollars up front. I could have got the hundred. At that point, I could have, you know, ordered everything. I'm pretty sure I, the money that I would have made from profit would have been way more. How can I say it? Like I would have still got some type of profit from that a hundred dollars instead of getting the full two hundred. So if she did bail out and she still bullshitted, you can't get mad at me, baby, because I told you, look, a thousand dollars up front. I mean, a thousand dollars up front. My bad, yo. A hundred dollars up front, and then you know, after I finish everything, you'll get your product, and then you'll send me the next a hundred dollars, and you know, it would have been way better. But yeah, man, I I didn't got so many failed payments with this first year of people just not coming through with what they said, and it's like, bro, y'all just have made me make this close. I wait, like I said once again, I wasted time, money, and patience to make this, and now you don't want to come up front and pay the money. Number three is don't focus on the next person's journey as that makes you lose focus on your. If you're so caught up on what someone else is doing and that you're not focused on what you're doing, you're 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 conscious like you're literally taking time off your purpose, your goals, your journey and you're looking at someone else's to try to see what they have going on, not realizing as that's taking time from yours, that's taking focus from yours, that's taking eyes and and you noticing stuff from your business. So always make sure that you're paying attention to what you have going on. Do not look at the next man. Do not look at the next woman for the, you know, the ladies looking because that does absolutely nothing for you. I can tell you that firsthand because when I first initially was going to start my clothing brand, I was on TikTok scrolling, scrolling for hours, y'all. And I was like, bro, there's so many brands out here. I don't feel like my brand is going to do good enough. Come, come to find out the first month I made the full investment for my cricket machine my you know the blanks my heat press i made all that money back mind you it took me about a thousand dollars to start out my clothing brand so with that being said focus on what you have going on in your journey because it's a win-win situation there's no way you can lose at that point all right number four is do not let no motion stop you you should be hitting the drawing board harder at this time all right do not let the fact that you haven't got a sale in in the last week stop you from making more sales in the future and you feeling like oh my clothing brand is not good enough where i'm slowing down and you know i fell off with my clothing brand never thinking that way for yourself because you already put a negative you already put a negative energy within yourself and then when you start speaking that out then, then you're putting negative energy in the universe and the only thing the universe is going to do is return it you what you put out so with that being said do not let that stuff stop you from making orders and stuff like that within the next couple really the next couple of days it's sometimes that i feel like that myself and that's why i wrote this down because it would be times where i'd be like damn bro i haven't made money for my clothing brand in like three days next day i make 600 dollars like that straight up like no cap y'all like it, it's so crazy how entrepreneurship works man there's so many times that i have went days without making money and for example, y'all, I was up $160 this week on trading, right? Next day, I was negative $60. Like, the trade basically reverse, hit, stop, loss, whole nine, right? And I was like, damn, bro. Like, I was I was so defeated. I was so beat up. I was like, bro, I really just lost these trades when I was up a paycheck for a day. Tell me why the next day I got into the trade, I got into a new trade. The trade was taking so long. It was consolidating. It was... It was at the same spot for damn near the whole day. Next day in the morning, I got into the same. Tr I got uh, I got into another position for the same trade. I ended up the week with four hundred and twenty dollars. So I'm sitting up here complaining about me losing the money for one day at work. One day, y'all. Then at the end of the week, I finish off the week with my full paycheck from work. No cap. Like, look at this. You know, some people we need proof and stuff like that as y'all can see right gbp can i'm up 420 based off these true trades 
So that just goes to show exactly what I just said. Do not let no motion stop you from getting more motion. So that's actually a thing as y'all clearly just seen, all right? Now for the fifth one is don't fear the risk of no one buying. This is a big one. I'm dealing with this personally now. I'm finna get some beanies done. Minimum order quantity for the manufacturer is 50 beanies for each color. I tried to do six colors, but at that point that'll be 300 beanies. You know, that's at least $10 to make a beanie because I want some satin insides. It's gonna be distressed. It's gonna be something different, man. And in that case, I was paying like $3,000 to make get them done, hypothetically speaking. That's a lot of money just to pay up front without having no type of demand. I haven't even promoted these beanies yet, so I don't even know if they're gonna do good. You know what I'm saying? Always make sure that you do not do not let the fear or risk of no one buying stop you from people buying. You know what I'm saying? So always go into it with the optimistic mindset of people are gonna buy, people are gonna shop. This is hard, nobody else is doing stuff like this. And you're gonna be straight, man. Do not let the negative thinking stop you from pushing out some good products because there's even times where people DM me. Some of y'all DM me on Instagram and be like, hey, can you check out my, you know, my clothing brand, this, that, and third. Y'all send it to me, I look at it, I'll be like, hey, that's hard, like, I like this. Y'all be, be like, oh, for real? You know, I didn't think it was, I'm like, bro, look, man, you have to be positive within the stuff that you create for yourself because nobody else is gonna like it the way you like it. Well, technically people do, but what I mean is they're not really gonna understand the journey behind what you created. They're not gonna understand fully what inspired you or what made you come up with that piece or why is it one-on-one -on -one or why is it different, you know? So always understand, man, that there's so many people and so many thoughts out here, so many opinions out here, it's crazy. Like, so many opinions, do not let that stop you from getting yours. It's more money than opinions out here, so don't let it stop you from getting yours. You know what I'm saying? So, but look, man, that's going to be the end of the top five don'ts with your clothing brand after my first year. So this can help you not make the same mistakes that I made and have your success with your clothing brand coming even faster. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this video, man. Y'all got something out of it. Y'all traders, man. Y'all keep attacking these markets. Y'all just seen what I just showed you, right? 420 and, two, and 24 hours, bro. 24 hours. Y'all stay safe out here, man. DHS is out.